data learners now we are coming to the concluding part of the video on unit 2 on business and society is the part 3 of the video on unit 2 this is all about business and society okay as i have told you all these videos are based on the learning objectives so in this video we shall mainly take up these two learning objectives and these are the uh, fifth and sixth learning objectives of your unit uh, slm self learning material to describe the concept of corporate governance these are also very important emerging concept corporate governance we shall discuss about this then we shall discuss about the various benefits of corporate governance corporate governance as i have told you is a very important emerging concept in today's concept context you know if you open a newspaper you will find right different malpractices unfair practices the companies are violating the disclosure norms profits are inflated right in the share market some doubtful practices are conducted different kinds of practices which basically destroy the image of the good organizations bad practices so this should not be there and to take care of this corporate governance how the corporate is governed right it has come into being corporate governance includes the processes through which corporations objectives are set and pursued in the context of the social regulatory and market environment see this definition we shall try to understand it in some simple language say an organization exists in the society an organization comprises of the shareholders suppose the majority of the shareholders will decide about the courses of action of an organization now for enabling the majority of the shareholders to decide about the future courses of a corporation the annual general meetings have to be conducted the board of directors meetings need to be conducted and while preparing the board of directors meetings the organization is supposed to put up the agenda note and in the agenda note the organization is supposed to put up all the details in a very transparent and credible manner so that the board of directors going to the agenda note they can take a decision which needs to be recorded which needs to be communicated to the other members that is what transparency is ensured credibility is ensured participation is ensured democratization is ensured and all these are part of corporate governance so this in suppose tendering procurement of goods how the tenders were floated notices were given or not whether those notices were processed so it basically includes the processes through which corporations objectives are set and pursued in the context of the social regulatory and market environment so currently the vigilance awareness week is going on that every at the end of october or beginning of november right that goes on that's a right for the public sector organizations so this vigilance is what so that the good practices prevail in an organization so it is basically in terms of meeting the requirements of the regulatory environment it is also to meeting the requirements of the market environment say so tax many times we will find some organizations evade taxes they do not pay the taxes they do the wrong things in order to avoid taxes but in a market environment one is supposed to earn profit by paying all the legal dues at the same time an organization cannot achieve its objectives without meeting the social obligations so corporate governance includes the processes through which corporations objectives are set goals are set and how those goals are pursued in the context of social regulatory and market environment so in order to make these things happen an organization is supposed to cultivate good corporate governance so in order to cultivate good corporate governance an organization is supposed to 
take certain measures. What are those measures? Distribution of rights and responsibilities to participants. Like say board of management. What will be the responsibilities of board of management? They will be responsible for this set of decisions. For the suppliers, they will have to meet the requirements of this, this, this only. Employees also, there could be some code of conducts. Employees also, there could be some rules, some service rules. So these are all part of corporate governance. They will have to have the rights and responsibilities. They will have to have the various, right, the rights and responsibilities to the various participants, like the members of the board of management, the chairman, the managing director, the general manager, the suppliers, the employees, that is basically all about corporate governance. So, as it appears, corporate governance is an organization-wide approach. It's not something that the chairman come managing director only will do. It's the entire organization which will adopt the approach of achieving corporate governance. So, it's basically balancing the interest of stakeholders. So, who are the stakeholders of an organization? Customers, employees, bankers, immediate community, local community, employees. These are all stakeholders. So, corporate governance implies that how to strike the balance, the interest of all the stakeholders, so that no interests are compromised. Everyone's interest is taken into account. And it, that's why it encompasses an entire sphere of management. It calls for taking the right kind of action plan. It calls for taking the right kind of internal control mechanism. Many organizations have got their own internal audit systems. Why this internal audit? Why is the maintenance of the accounts in a very transparent and credible manner? This is corporate governance. And after maintaining all these accounts, at the end of the year, the balance sheet will be prepared, the profit and loss account will be prepared, the financial statements will be prepared, and this should be, should not be kept confidential. It should be disclosed. Because disclosure will give larger credibility, larger acceptability. So, it's basically an organization-wide approach. It will try to balance the interests of the stakeholders and it will encompass every sphere of management, including action plan, internal control and corporate disclosure. So benefits, it ensures corporate success. At the same time, it also helps in economic growth because you are doing the things legally. You are not supposed to pay any penalty. You are doing the things legally. You are earning profit legitimately. So it's likely to stimulate your own thinking, stimulate your own activities, sustain your own activities. It also helps in improving, the con increasing the investor's confidence. They would like to invest more because the organization is managed well. Good practices are there. Reduce cost of capital. They would be interested in investing at a lower rate of interest. It is likely to influence in good practices like say reduction of wastages, corruption will not be there, risk and mismanagement will be less. So that's why corporate governance is emerging as a very desirable right, practice in the today's organizations. So this is all about your unit on business and society. Thank you.